Welcome back, Lighting Friends. It's Rob from Pathway Connectivity Solutions talking about the Cognito Lighting Control Console and one of the very powerful features of it that we've mentioned before called Natural Language Control. Now, this is technology that we use to control your automated lights well, and your dimmers and everything else. But instead of fading just pure DMX values, which are going from 0 to 255, Everything you do inside of Cognito is done in real-world units that mean something on the stage, kind of like panning and tilting in degrees, or strobing in hertz, or rotating an RPM in directions like clockwise and counterclockwise. So today I'm going to demonstrate some very, very cool features which are just one encoder tick away from your ability to use them, uh, and it's how you move the lights. Uh, and is it either in a polar motion, how moving lights almost always move because they're built on tilting and panning, or are they going to move kind of like follow spots do on the stage in straight lines? So moving lights are great because they can hit almost anything on stage. So I have a VL3500 right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my position controls. And what I can do is I can tilt it up and I can hit the guy here and I can move him over here and I can hit this guy down stage right or just by panning it over I can go all the way over to the other side of the stage and hit this fella over here. So did you notice something when I panned it across? It didn't actually move and touch this guy. It's all over the back wall and this is the problem when you fade in DMX, because this movement here is a whole lot of pan, see, I'm moving the pan wheel, and not a lot of tilt to get to two very important places on the stage. And that is how most consoles work. They just take the pan value and move it in a straight fashion, and the tilt value and move it in a straight fashion. But when you're working with a moving light, that ends up in a big fat arc. So. If I um, release this guy now, I've pre-programmed up a, um, a movement that goes... Now, I'm going to do it on the plaster line here, just right across the front of the stage, so you can see uh, moving it in a straight line. So this second handle here will just move it in a straight line. That's very clever. Now, how did I do that? So what you do is you select your light and uh, you go into position control and you see the red wheel is pan and the green wheel is tilt as it always has been. And what you might not have noticed is the yellow wheel is this thing called pan tilt mode. So if I hit the A button, I have the option of going linear or polar. Now the default is polar because that's how all other moving light desks work. Um, but just by changing it to linear, as I did in this case, the light is going to go in a straight line. It's very simple. So here I can move the light from stage right to stage left in a straight line. Um, now, what's really kind of fun is to see how the fade actually does that. Now, if we zoom in really close to this light Whee! and uh, have a look around. As I move across the stage, as the beginning of the fade begins, see it's tipping the light down. And then when it's very close to itself, it does quite a lot of panning. And then in the same instance, it starts tipping the light up. And you can imagine that those are very strange DMX values coming out. Because if you wanted to do this and emulate it with a normal desk that can go from a value of like 10 to a value of 20, and it has to go all the way through 11, 12, 13, up to 19, 20, uh, you wouldn't actually see the direction of the light changing uh, as it does here. It tips down and then it tips up all within the same cue. So, uh, this is done with absolutely no setup whatsoever. You basically just go and say your pan tilt mode is either polar or linear. Polar or linear. So uh, 
I want to look at this because I said there was no setup. It uh, it is very handy, not for just lighting bits along the floor, but in this case, I'm going to take this light in green, and I'm going to um, here we go. So you can see his shadow, and I'm going to move that light to the other side. And as I move in a straight line, it's going to light this guy's head. You see his perfect shadow? And it's going to light this guy's head. And it's going to light this guy's head. And it's going to light that guy's head. So now it is possible with a handle to follow somebody down a runway, like um, in a fashion show, or just to follow a movement. And what's very cool about it too, is it doesn't matter where the lights are positioned on the stage. So I've written a cue here that takes four lights. And there they are, one, two, three, four, and I've labeled them red, green, blue, and yellow, so you can see them. So let's just have a look at the four of them. So this is my red one. He is front lighting that guy. This is the green one. It's coming from house right, lighting all the way across the stage. The blue one, backlighting that guy down right. And the yellow one. Now, if I allow all of these lights to move from our down right guy to our down left guy in a queue, let's go into play. So here I am in preset down right. Now we'll do a normal polar movement like all other lighting desks do and we're going to fade to downstage left so you'll see what happens is i'm all over that table i'm all over the front row the people uh, that have paid for those seats don't really appreciate the lights in their eyes but when we do get to the final cue we are lighting up our guy on the other side of the stage now let's reset these lights over here and all I've done for this next cue is I've moved all of those parameters in these guys here under control to use linear movement. So let's have a look at what happens when you fade four lights from one side of the stage to the other. That guy's lit perfectly. He's lit perfectly. That guy's lit perfectly. And we get to the other side of the stage. That's so much fun, I just want to do it again. And we do a go. And look, the table is not lit. The people in the front row don't have lights in their eyes. And now it looks like I have four follow spot operators working on one finger. So that is a overview of linear movement. I hope you join me next time. And we're going to have a look at effects on Cognito. Take care. Thank you.